When we type something simple like www.facebook.com or google.com, but really going on behind the screen. Once you type the URL and hit enter, the packet is born. So it's generated at the moment when you decide to initiate a request towards the server that you require on the, on the internet, any website that you would care to visit. So at that moment, as the packet is being born, it has a few uh, parameters that actually define its life in a way. The first parameter would be what is its home address, where it comes from, the original IP address. And then the second really important segment is the destination it requires. So uh, the packet from the beginning knows what its final destination is. What the packet doesn't know is how it gets there. That's decided by other devices like routers. So when the packet is born, it first goes to your home router. Then from the home router, it goes to the bigger router, which is somewhere in your building or your neighborhood. And then from there, it goes to the central building of your internet service provider. So what's going on during this like one part of the second? So if a user from Serbia tries to access Facebook, they would first go to Belgrade, no matter where, where they're from, uh, then most likely to Budapest, uh, Frankfurt, where the biggest uh, internet exchange point in, in, in Europe is, then to the UK and Ireland, where the headquarters for Europe for Facebook are, and then through a submarine cable, go to the other continent, which is North America in this case. Then there is another layer of recording and possibilities for retaining data and analyzing data by different authorities. And all this happens in a, in a tiny piece of time, less than a second obviously, that we don't even articulate on. On our physical human level, we don't, we don't have a feeling that some piece of data went to the US and back in the time that we spent to press enter because almost instantly the, the screen changed. So all of those countries on the way, they, they're all able to collect this metadata or how this is functioning? They're not just able, they're collecting it because all of these countries where the traffic passes through do have data retention laws. So the same principles that we mentioned for the Serbian, for the one that happens in, on the first point, happens until the end. Which means that the Hungarian ISP makes a copy and then the Hungarian government can access it because that's the law. And then the German as well. And then if it goes to the UK afterwards, same principle applies everywhere. So that means there are some borders on, it, on the internet. We usually think about the internet on a more abstract level, but the internet is quite physical in its own uh, modus operandi, if we can call it like that. So the internet works quite physically. It works in electricity, it works in machines, which are located physically in some dark, cold spaces, which are in some countries. We had like one packet going all the way through like five, seven different countries and all of those governments did whatever they do and all of these internet service providers did whatever they do. And you know, it's like really exciting story of this like one internet packet. But then just he arrived there and then he triggers Again, the same story on... On the way back. Yeah. yeah. Once the packet arrives there, it activates the resource that the user required, and then a bunch of other packets are born and are streamed on the way back through maybe the same points, maybe different points, to the user that basically sent the request. But not only that happens, because on when you arrive there, there might be some trackers who send information to their owners about that packet from Serbia visiting the particular So that website. means like from that moment you have like another like, like yeah. explosion it's, of like You have new... like fireworks of packets 
and all of them now goes to again different places around the globe, leaving different traces again and again and again and again. Yeah, the afterlife is, ba is basically what data retention tells it to be. The ISP, the company that offers the service, has an obligation to keep those records for, for a year. So the afterlife of a packet is usually about a year. And in that period, it can also be copied and accessed and distributed to other uh, interested actors in, in, in different contexts. So if, let's but what, why all of them want to collect this at all? What, 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 what they can learn from there? Like, what's, what's the point? The main reasoning for data retention is fighting crime or national security. So basically what governments say they want to do with these retained data is to try uh, and, and uh, recognize uh, potential threats in society or to investigate crime. But there is a gap between what uh, governments have as a pretext for data retention vis-a-vis -vis what are the threats by having data retention. And there is a trend in some countries, in, in, in Europe especially, to just discontinue data retention because it's proven to be not really an efficient way to fight crime.